Leg locks that I teach are very effective. They're very simple. I don't teach a lot of theory. Um, the leg locks I teach work, and I've proven by doing so in the matches that I've participated in. Um, leg locks are definitely going to be the next evolution of uh, no holds barred fighting. Um, everybody knows about an arm bar. Um, everybody knows about the triangle choke. Leg locks are something that is new, and I feel that my my techniques are some of the cutting edge in the industry. Okay, I'm going to start with Chuck and his guard. Okay. You cannot do any submission technique unless you break a guard, okay, and especially with the leg locks, okay. There's a few different techniques, especially in the Valley Tito or No Holds Barred type of fighting. It's a lot easier to break somebody's guard because of the punishment they could take if they keep you in their closed guard by the punches. Okay, so I do a combination using my elbows, okay, to effectively open his guard by pinching and digging into his groin muscle, okay. I take my inside knee, okay, put it right in his groin, okay. As I lean back, I'm also crossing my hands over his stomach, okay. This is restric restricting his air, okay. It's making it difficult for him to breathe, okay. So I'm pushing his stomach, okay? As I'm pushing, I have my knee in his pelvic, I'm arching back, and I'm also pushing my elbows into his thighs, okay? The minute that opens his leg, first thing I'm gonna do with my forearm is push this down, okay? Hold it down with the forearm. My opposite arm is gonna come around, okay? To the lower part of his leg. You don't wanna be up high, you don't wanna be too low, but you want to be right here, okay? I'm turning my forearm in, okay? This is the knife of my forearm. I want that right on his leg, right on his below his lower calf muscle, okay? I don't want any space in there. I want to keep it tight right in the beginning, okay? If I start with good technique to start, I'll finish with good technique. So again, in the close guard, push on the stomach, Push the knee, as I break, the hand pushes, the knife to the forearm, it's tight, okay? I start to fall back on my hip and my right leg rotates over, okay? I'm squeezing my knees together, okay? Grabbing my fist here and I'm pulling my fist up. As I pull it up, it's gonna dig into his calf muscle, okay? Right there, okay? My body motion, is like this, okay? The reason a lot of people do leg locks and they'll come flat right to the mat like this. I don't have enough, I don't have enough arch in my back to be able to get an effective leg lock here because the mat's stopping me, the mat's preventing me. So I always want to turn to the inside this way, okay? Squeeze his knees, squeeze my knees together, okay? Keep my Form in his calf, okay? My foot comes around, okay? Pop my hips and arch. Over, I want you to over exaggerate the arch as hard as you can, okay? Once again, I'm in a closed guard, crossing the hands on the stomach, elbows here, okay? Pushing here, reach your back, right to here, okay? And go for the tap out. Now once I get to here, as you can see, my foot is trapped. That doesn't mean I can't tap somebody out with my foot being trapped in here, okay? But it is definitely more effective. Um, once I get to this position, okay, I have time now. Okay, I've gotten good position. I have time to bring my knee up, pop my leg out, okay? My feet now, this is very important, my feet are on his chest, okay? My toes cross over each other. The reason for that is if I cross my feet this way, he could easily get me in a leg lock, he could easily throw my feet to the side, okay? Or if I put my leg here, now he could get me in a leg lock. That's bad position. So you wanna drill this consistently and drill it with bringing your feet flat on his chest, not like this, not your heels like this, but your feet flat on the chest, crossing your toes. Okay, from this position, okay, again, I'm arching this way with my hips are pushing this way. 
My body's arching back right there. Okay, if he tries to come up and grab my hands, it's very easy to push him and kick him back down. Okay, if I fall to the outside though, which is in proper technique, so when I do my leg lock here, see how easy it is for him to come up? I can't kick him down because my feet are in bad position. He could grab my wrist right here and come up. So I always want to fall to the inside. Right to here, with my wrist here, my legs together squeezing, my feet on his chest, popping the hips. Let me show you one time in full motion. Okay, that's our first leg lock. Okay, the next leg lock I'm gonna show again is from the guard. It's a slight variation off the first leg lock. Okay, again, I'm in the guard. Okay, another thing that I didn't go over is that when you're doing no holds barred or Valley Tito fighting, it's very easy to open somebody's guard by striking. Okay, so if I'm in this position here, I'm striking here. Okay, I have elbows coming down here, okay. And it seems like the minute you hit somebody's head, they might release and readjust their guard. The minute they let go of this closed guard is when you go for it. It's that element of surprise which will catch somebody with a leg lock. Okay, so I'm striking here. Boom, I hit them. They open up their guard, okay? This time, I'm gonna use my forearm to push his groin down, and my foot and my knee is gonna come up the middle, this way. And I'm gonna be pushing into him, pressure into him. Okay, what he's gonna do is, is push me back a little bit, and the minute he pushes me back is when I fall back into my uh, leg lock. So I'm up here, I'm up here, he pushes me back. Boom, fall right into the leg lock. Again, my knee can stay here, and I can pop, pop the leg lock here, or my leg can pop out, cross my toes on his chest, and arch. Okay. Once again, in his guard. Okay, you can open up his guard, striking here, elbow to the thigh. Okay, once I hit the head, he opens up his guard. I push down, my knee comes up the middle, fall back to this position. I always fall to the inside. Okay, over exaggerate, popping and arch. He taps, also bringing the foot up to the middle. Again, arching and pop the hips. Okay, that's another variation off the leg lock by bringing your knee up the middle. And I find these two leg locks very effective and very simple. Okay, this next leg lock I'm gonna show you um, has some transitional elements. When I start to fall back into my leg lock, he's gonna counter. And the most important thing with knowing leg locks is having a counter for his counter when I throw a leg lock on him because the good guys are gonna be able to counter you and you're gonna to have to think one step ahead of them. And I call this resetting or resetting the leg lock, okay? So it's like a bait, you're baiting him to reset to a tighter leg lock. Okay, let me show you. So I'm in his guard, again, I could uh, break his guard once I break the guard, I come back for a straight leg lock, falling to the inside. He's starting to come up. Okay, the good guys are going to start to come up. Once he gets to this position, it looks like he's going to mount me. But all I need to do to reset his mount is take my hand and put on his tricep. Okay, wherever his body and his upper torso goes, okay, his lower leg is going to maneuver in a spot where I can catch him in the leg lock. Okay, so as I push his tricep, Look where his body goes. My right leg needs to come and reset. This is where I call resetting, okay? As my right leg comes over, whips over, I'm gonna squeeze my knees together, okay? My left leg is hooking his foot on the inside. As I squeeze, I push, okay? My right hand comes around for a hill hook, right here, okay? The most important thing about going for a hill hook is to over-exaggerate my hand. So as it comes over, I'm over-exaggerating, I'm hooking it. As I hook, I'm doing a bicep curl this way, okay? I'm not necessarily taking the heel hook this way. I'm taking it at a 45 degree angle up, 
So I lock onto here, I can squeeze my other hand together, clamp, and I'm gonna be taking the hill this way. As I'm squeezing knees, my knees together, I'm also popping my hips right there. I'm gonna show you this leg lock from a different angle so that you guys can see it more effectively. Okay, this is the resetting of the straight leg lock. Okay, breaking his guard, falling back. Okay, he's starting to come up. I'm almost baiting him to come up. Okay, I reposition myself by putting my hand on the tricep and pushing his body this way. Once I push the body this way, I'm, I'm swiveling my hips. Okay, my hips are almost spinning this way. Okay, as my hips spin this way, my foot clamps down and my knees squeeze together. My right hand over exaggerates that heel hook motion. Okay, I'm squeezing like a bicep curl, locking on my hands right here, locking my knees together. Okay, from this position, I'm extending, popping my hips and twisting. Right there. Okay. From this position, I could pop his ankles, I could pop his ligaments in his knee. Piece of, I mean, it's very effective. When you guys drill this, be very careful not to torque because it's not a, a gradual submission where you're going to feel pain. It's going to pop before you feel any gradual type of pain. So you have to be real careful in time you drill with leg locks. Okay, so I hook it in here, squeeze, and turn. Okay, that's resetting of the leg lock. This next position I'm going to show you is a hill hook off the last leg lock when you catch somebody in a hill hook and he's going to try to roll out of it. As his body is moving and twisting, okay, I'm going to roll with him. As I roll with him, okay, I'm going to reset myself by arching back. As I arch back and reset after the first roll, he's actually going to make the leg lock tighter for me and it's going to be even tighter than the first hill hook. Watch what I'm talking about. I fall back into the hill hook, okay? I'm hooking here, okay? He's gonna roll. As he rolls, all I do is roll with him and squeeze my legs together. Once we roll the first time, all I have to do is arc my body this way, okay? As you can see, his body is a lot tighter. The knees twisted because of his first roll. As I twist, as he twists, it made his ligaments tighter and twisted. I squeeze my knees together. This outside hand grabs the hill. Okay, right here, right into the hill hook. Now it's even tighter. He won't be able to roll because now this time I readjust and have this foot under his knee. Okay, I elevate. When he tries to roll, I elevate. Right here, try to roll, he can't roll because I'm elevating. Okay, so I readjust, arching back, hook the hill, right here, the hill hook. I'm gonna show you this from a different angle so we can see it a little bit better. Readjust, squeeze knees. I can grip, take this hand, put on this hill just to pull up, lock the hands, and twist. Right there. One more angle. Okay, check while you stay here. I really want you guys at home to be able to see this technique, okay, at a good angle. So I'm in his guard, break the guard, as I fall back into the hill hook, okay, he's going to roll. As he rolls, I just, I'm real relaxed, I just roll with him, okay. Right here, I just scoop my body this way, okay, grab the hill, okay. Now it's even tighter than the first hill hook I had, because he twisted himself into a tighter hill hook. Grab it here, and arc. Okay, that's a good variation. Okay, from this position, I'm gonna go into some knee bars. The knee bars that I show are extremely effective. Nobody does some of the fine details that I do that I'll show you, which will help you guys be more effective with your knee bars. Okay, again, we're breaking the guard, striking, elbows. Once the guard breaks, okay, I use this forearm to lower his leg, okay? My other leg, my other arm comes and hooks his knee right here, squeezes, almost like I'm doing a bicep curl. My inside knee comes around and hits the mat. Okay, from this position, what I need to do and what separates this knee bars from most of the knee bars out there is I hook it really tight and as I fall, I'm pulling it, pulling it tight, pulling it tight. Okay, I'm pulling the knee this way, okay? And I'm sliding my arm up this way. See that, as I slide it up, it's 
tightening up his leg like a piano string and making it very tight, okay? I hold the foot as close to my chest as possible, okay? Which creates leverage right here on his knee, okay? My right hand comes and grabs onto my wrist here. My left hand comes and cups his heel, okay? Again, I can leave my knee caught. See how it's caught in there? I can leave it caught and still tap him out. Okay, all I gotta do is pop, and he'll tap out. Or I could be in this position, pop my leg out, cross my feet, cup his heel, pull the leg this way, and pop. Okay, once again. From the guard, breaking the guard. Coming around, hugging this, like a bicep curl, holding it tight. My inside knee comes through to the mat, okay? This is what's gonna make the difference right here, okay? It's pulling this leg, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it up, okay? This knee, okay, can stay there. I cup the heel, my right leg comes to here, and I hold, okay? My leg comes around, I cup the heel, and I pop. Let me show you one time in real time. Okay, that completes the knee bar from the guard. The next leg lock I'm gonna show you is a knee bar from the half guard. The percentage that you can get from a knee bar off the half guard is higher than from in the guard. Okay, so we're breaking the guard. Okay, there's different ways to get in a half guard. When I'm breaking the guard, I step over, okay? He's gonna, automatically, he's gonna cinch up and go for the half guard and turn into me, okay? Let me turn, turn it around so I can show you guys a better angle here, okay? So I'm in the half guard here. Again, my hand comes under, hooks. I hug the leg here, okay? This hand right here is gonna create a channel, right here. I'm gonna post my hand here See this channel? This is the channel where my knee is gonna flow through. Okay, as I'm hugging his leg here, my knee flows through, okay? Right here, my hand posts. Now this is where the detail comes in. I pull the leg up, fall back, I pull it really tight, really tight. Glide my forearm up. If I get to here, okay? My leg can stay there and I can pop, or I can pop it out. Okay, pull it up tight and pull it again. Okay. A lot of times what I'll do is even in a side mount, because this move is so effective, when I'm in a side mount position, okay, I won't automatically just give him my leg because he's gonna know something's, something's up. But I'm gonna bait him a little bit, okay? My leg's gonna be kind of low and he's gonna hook it and I'm gonna, you know, almost fake like, oh, darn, he got me in a, got me back in the half guard. That's why I'm gonna come up, post my hand here to create that channel, come under, my knee's gonna go right through, right to here, okay? If he, if he hooks you like this, it's not a big deal. My hands are smarter than his feet, okay? I, my hands are smarter than his feet, so I can grab his heel here, okay? I can grab his other here and just throw it off. Come to right here, okay? So anytime a guy, the first thing they're gonna do when you go for a heel, because they're gonna lock like that, Okay, my hands are smarter. I'm gonna come here, to here. See, as I'm cupping his heel here, all I have to do is just come under, grab the wrist, and pull it tight. Okay, let's have you guys practice that stuff at home. One technique that you could do from the knee bar to make things a little bit tighter, okay, especially if you have a, an individual who does a lot of twisting, okay, he's twisting back and forth with his knee, and you're having trouble holding that foot against your chest, I do what's called a reverse knee bar. So I come to the knee bar here, okay? Person is twisting back and forth, so I take that my hand and I bring it over. Now I lock it right to here, okay? Pop, oops. Okay, so I'm coming to here. My hand is coming over, locking to here, okay? Squeezing my knees. This prevents him from being able to teeter back and forth. If he does roll, I'm gonna roll with him and transition into another leg lock. But right here, just pop the hips. Okay, very effective. Okay, now when I'm going for a leg lock, a knee bar, 
from my half guard, a lot of times the good guys are going to know that you're doing it and they're going to catch your feet. You just have to think one step, one move above them, okay, and just not even worry, not even panic. Okay, so what I'm talking about is I'm in a half guard, I'm going for a knee bar. As I try to step through the channel, he grabs and locks on my feet. He's locking pretty tight. A lot of guys will even think they can get you with a hill hook here. They'll try something like that. Just don't worry, don't panic. I can simply grab his hand. I got great positioning. I'm on top of him. I can grab his hand and take off the pressure. Okay, just don't worry. You're gonna, you guys are gonna drill this. You're gonna be real comfortable here. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is take my outside hand and it's gonna replace my hand here. Okay, my foot here is gonna come up. Okay. As I come up, I'm going to whip my right leg over. Okay, once I whip it over, again, I'm in the hill hook position, so I squeeze the knee. Okay, I over exaggerate the hill hook. I come to the hill hook, arching back, and I'm in the hill hook territory. Okay, I'm going to show you guys this from another angle. Okay, watch the, watch the knee bar. As I'm going for the knee bar, he's going to grab my feet. Okay, and I'm going to counter. This is a little bit of another different angle, so you guys can see a different angle. Okay, as I'm in the half guard here, okay, I'm gonna hook, I'm gonna create my channel. See how it grabs my feet. Don't worry, a lot of times we'll go for a hill hook, whatever. I got better position, I can just grab here. Okay, I step up with this outside leg. This hand changes position. Okay, as I fall back, my leg whips over. Okay, right to here, I'm squeezing my legs together. Okay, my outside hand over exaggerates, hooking the hill, okay, locking here. Okay, arching back and twisting right there makes for a nice counter to his counter right now I'm going to show you some leg attacks that you can do from the guard position from the open guard so it's going to allow you not to get struck as badly um, from a closed guard okay um, let's start with me let's start let's start from the basics let me I'm going to start within the closed guard and I'm going to show you how to get into that position okay from a closed guard okay I have them locked tight, okay? Um, if this person's trying to strike, whatever they're trying to do, okay, it's gonna, I'm gonna wanna open up my guard. And as I open up my guard, this leg drops down, okay, and I twist my body into him. As I twist my body into him, I'm essentially putting him into a half guard, okay, like a half guard to here. Except I'm bringing my outside leg in, okay? If he tries to attack me by punches, very easily just to just to push him back with my knee okay I could push him back a lot of times when you're dealing with an open guard or a half guard the person has to want has to want to be on the ground if Chuck doesn't want to be in the ground with me look how easy it for him just to back off you know I mean I could I could do some minimal hand you know hand fighting grabbing his hand you know grabbing his hands but you know there's only so much I could do to keep a person down when I have an open guard okay so the person is gonna have to want to be down there Number one. Number two, you're, you're gonna be going for this move so quick that even if the guy doesn't wanna be on the ground, he's gonna have no choice because you're gonna go from one move to the next. Okay, so I'm in the half guard. First, I'm in the closed guard. Okay, I drop down. This foot comes here and hooks. Hooks here, my outside leg comes up. Okay, from this position, I'm gonna show you a different angle after this, but for right now, taking this hand and I'm coming under his armpit to his tricep here and I'm pushing his body that way as I push his body that way I'm hooking with this hand under okay as I roll him through I'm pushing with my knee to get that extra force to push him over okay from here if he rolls to this side I'm gonna come right into a knee bar right where I was I can come out and hook pop right into a knee bar Okay, one more time. From the closed guard. Okay, I'm dropping down, coming into a half guard, bringing my outside knee up. My outside hand comes to his tricep. I'm diving under, okay? As I push with my knee and twist with my hips out, he'll come right into a knee bar. Okay, again, I'm bringing my right arm to my wrist, to the heel, pulling, and popping my hips. That's a very effective knee bar you could do from the guard. Okay, I'm gonna do the same move, this time from a different angle, so you guys at home can see it and practice more effectively. Okay, again, I'm from a closed guard. 
from this position here, I'm gonna drop my drop my foot and bring it to the inside. My outside leg comes up to the knee. Okay? Even if a person tries to strike you from this position, okay, it's very easy to just bury your head and come under to the tricep. See that? If he's striking me, okay, I bury my head and come under. Okay? If he tries to cross face me here, okay, it's very easy also just to bring your hand to the tricep and dive under. Okay? Again, I'm diving here. I'm pushing. Okay? His body. Okay? As he spins, a lot of guys would just spin that way to try, they're trying to twist and they're trying to roll out of it. But they're actually giving you a knee bar when they try to roll. Coming right to the knee bar, okay, and pop your hips. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more time in real time in a fast motion. All the way from the guard. Okay, that's a knee bar from the guard. From the guard, we're gonna go over the same knee bar, except the last time I was showing you when he turns away. This time Chuck is gonna turn into me and it's gonna give you two variations of a hill hook and a leg lock that you could do. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm dropping into my position, okay? My open guard with the knee on the inside. I'm diving through. Okay, this time he's resisting me and instead of rolling, and trying to twist out that way, he's gonna turn into me. So my hand position needs to change. My hand is right here as he turns into me, okay? I'm gonna reset by scooting my hips and rotating this leg, okay? Then I'm going for the hill hook here, okay? Now the hill hook is gonna be more effective for maybe getting a break here, okay? If I tweak it hard, the guy's gonna hurt his ankle if he doesn't tap, okay? With the hill hook, we have more of a chance of him getting out and rolling out though. He's, if he could twist and kick out, there's a chance that he could get out. So if I want a little bit of higher percentage to hold him in tight, there's like a switch right to the leg lock. Now he's gonna have a really hard time of kicking out of this. Okay, and I can also switch to a hill hook, to a leg lock. To a hill hook, to a leg lock. Again, he's probably gonna roll. So again, earlier I showed you when he rolls. Okay, just stay with him. Okay, and reset your hill hook here and go for the hill hook or the leg lock. The next position I'm gonna show is from the mount. Okay, when an individual is mounting me, I could get him out of the mount, okay, and I could also throw him in a leg lock real quick. So it's real effective, it catches people by surprise. Uh, a lot of people don't know about this technique. Okay, so I'm gonna be in a mount position here. Okay. Now, if a person is striking you, okay, if this is a valley to match, I have to be careful for that, okay? I'm gonna lock around his body here to prevent him from striking, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is unlock my hands. My hands are gonna come to his hips, okay? I'm gonna bury my heels into the mat right here, okay? Once I do this, I'm gonna pop my hip up, okay? As I pop my hip up, I'm gonna turn my wrist, turn my forearm on the inside, okay? This is gonna prevent him from being able to do any arm bars to me. It's, gonna, it's also gonna allow me to create some space to bring my knee up, okay? So again, from the mount. Okay, so I'm locked here, I drop down, okay? I pop up, forearm brings his knee out. I mean, brings his, brings his knee out to bring my knee in. Okay, once I bring my knee in, I retransition him, reset him. I'm gonna push his tricep this way, okay? My outside leg is gonna move over, squeeze, right into a hill hook, okay? Let me show you that from a different angle and you guys will get a little bit better feel of it. Okay, this angle, a different angle, the same move when he's in the mount, okay? If he's striking me, I have to walk around here to prevent him from striking. I'm gonna let go. My hands are gonna come to his hips, okay? As I pop his hips up, my elbow turns in and my forearm gets him on the inside of his groin, okay? So I pop up, push here, so my knee can come through the middle, okay? My outside leg is gonna reset, but first thing I need to do is get his body and his momentum going this way. All I do is I can take the back of my hand or this hand and push him this way. Once he pushes, my body's gonna spin, okay? I'm gonna whip my leg over, squeeze it, catch him with the hill hook, right here. 
Okay? Let me show you one time in full motion. Okay, from this position. Okay. Right to the tap out. Okay, that completes our technique from the mount. Leg lock to the mount, it's very effective. Okay, when a guy has you uh, stomach to back in this position, okay, there's a very simple but effective knee bar you could do from here. The first thing I have to watch out for is I have to keep my head forward and arch because what he could do is he could get me in a, he could tomahawk me and get me in a rear naked choke. So I keep my head, I'm watching my head, okay? Okay, but I don't want to hang out down here. Next thing I do is I push his leg down, okay? As I step over his leg, okay, I can hook it with my foot here and also my hand. As I slide back, I'm falling right back into a knee bar. Okay, again, lock on the wrist, right to here. Okay, once again, in the back stomach position. From here, I'm watching my head so he doesn't take my head off, okay? Pushing his leg down, okay? As I step over, I climb it up, I'm backing up and I'm climbing into him. See how it goes right into an E-bar? Right there. Okay? Once again, I'm gonna show you in real time and fast motion. Okay, that's a great move to do from inside, um, inside his uh, stomach. Another very effective leg lock that I've seen, I've seen used in matches to submit people, is actually very simple. Um, we call it the whip over leg lock, okay? And the reason is because you're whipping your leg over right as you break the guard. And you're not putting yourself in a vulnerable position because you're staying um, in a position where you're not necessarily falling back to where he could come up on you, you don't have to reset yourself, okay? So this is just something you could try and then go to something else that has a low percentage. Okay, so I'm in the guard, okay? Break the guard, lower his foot, okay? As I come back to leg lock, instead of falling back here, okay, all I'm gonna do is whip my leg over, break to here, okay? I'm gonna keep my heel very close to his stomach, okay? Keep it really close. I'm gonna post my hand right to here, and all I'm gonna do is pop my hips as I squeeze my knees together, right? Okay, it's real effective. Right there. Okay, once again, breaking the guard, come into here, put the foot really close and tight. Right here, okay? Um, if he tries to roll, and you have to roll to your stomach, okay? Just be careful that he doesn't have your foot. Just keep it close. Close and tight, and I can roll and I can get a little more leverage if I pop my hips forward. Okay, that's a real effective uh, move. It's real quick, uh, real effective to do from inside his guard. Doesn't have a lot of uh, percentage that he's gonna catch me in anything, and you can go switch off to another move. To be a good leg lock artist, you have to be just as good at counters as well, because as a person catches you in a leg lock, you have to be able to counter and also the person is going to know how to counter your leg blocks and you're going to have to reset. So I'm going to go through some counters right now that I find are extremely effective. Okay, uh, let's have Chuck down um, in the guard. Okay, the first thing a good leg lock counter expert has to do is know that, I, know, in the back of his mind, know that I'm always going to be going for leg blocks. Okay. So as the minute a person hooks the leg and starts to fall back, he's already reacting, okay? He's already reacting. So I'm gonna go to the guard. I'm not gonna go to my back. Chuck's gonna be going for a leg lock on me, okay? As he's falling back, okay, I'm already coming up and countering. So as you fall back, okay, I'm already coming up. This hand here is blocking his foot from coming over. Okay, it's keeping on the inside. Okay, right here. So he can't whip that leg over. Okay. I start to crawl my feet towards his head, come to the mouth. Okay. Most technique tapes, you know, I've seen show you a counter. They start with the leg lock here. Okay. And yeah, you need to know how to get out of the leg lock from this position. But what I find is even more effective is preventing the leg lock from coming. Okay, and all I have to do 
is uses his momentum as he's falling back to come up with him. Okay, so get back into a fall back into the leg lock. I'm coming up. So I'm using his momentum. I'm coming up. I'm coming up with him. And look, he doesn't even have me in a good leg lock. Now, yeah, he can reset here by pushing me and coming to reset. The only thing I have to do to prevent that, okay, is, is crawl into him and block this hand. So I'm crawling back into him, blocking this hand, coming to him out. Okay, let me show you that at a different angle so you guys at home can get a better look. Yeah, as he falls back, blocking the foot, okay, crawling up to him out. So if he's going for that leg, I go this way, chuck over my other leg now. So if he goes for this leg, again, Blocking here, crawling on my hands and feet, back up into them, come into a mount. Okay? That's the first and most important leg lock counter you should learn. Okay. Once a person gets you in a leg lock and it's tight and secure, it's a lot harder to counter, but you still need to know it anyway. Okay? So Chuck's gonna get me in a nice tight leg lock. Okay. The first thing I want to try to do is extend my foot and lock my knee out. And I don't know if you guys can see from this angle, but I'm, I'm hyper extending my foot here, okay, and locking it this way. Okay, I don't want to keep my toe straight, but I'm keeping it up, okay. I also don't want to be on my foot, I mean on my, on my butt, just hanging out down here. I want to be coming up here, so I want to be on my knee, okay. First thing I have to do is clear these obstacles that are in my way, okay. So my hands are smarter than his feet, so all I have to do is work it here. Now be prepared for him to reset. Right when I take his foot off, he's just gonna come right back, and I'm gonna start from square one, okay? Like I said, this isn't an easy way to counter out a leg lock, but you need to know it. I'd rather have you guys work on preventing it, but you need to know this, okay? So I'm coming here. Now I'm coming straight up the middle, okay? Using my forearms to block his growing down, okay? Stepping over, okay, if I need to interlock, my fingers behind his head and pull up on his head. That's fine. But my main goal is to step over, come into a mount position. Okay, I can strike or I can reset myself. Okay, that's a good good way to practice. Um, this is just to get with your with your partner and just practice breaking out of the leg lock, coming up, clearing the obstacles, and coming up. One more time. Chuck, get me the leg lock. Let me show you guys at a different angle here. Okay, so he has my foot. I extend my foot up this way. Okay, I need to get off my hip here. Bring my foot up. Now my hands are going to clear his legs. Okay, I'm going to keep my knee straight. If I'm coming up the middle and I turn my knee, look, he could reset and go for a hill hook. Okay, so it's very important that I keep my knee straight and keep it on his chest here. Okay, I push his leg down, step over, come for a mount. Okay, this is a very important leg lock you need to know because if you're going to become a leg lock artist, you're going to get caught in leg locks too. Okay, it's very effective for me to clear. It's very important for him to keep on the inside like this. Okay, because he could push me back. As I try to come forward, he could kick me back. So all I need to do is turn his body, rotate it to the outside, grabbing the hills, and I really need to pop my hips hard and turn into him. Okay, it's gonna buy me that few seconds right here. Okay, because now he's in a bad position. I grab his heel and I need to I need to get off, I need to get on my knee and come up this way. Okay, and put pressure on him. If this is a valley Tito or no holds barred mixed martial art match and I could strike, okay, he might want to let go of the leg lock completely. If this is a submission match, I'm still gonna need to come up the middle, okay? Come up the middle, release, come up the middle, keeping my knee straight, stepping over come into a mount okay it's real effective and it's a real simple counter to get out of a leg lock the next technique I'm going to show is the counter to a hill hook um, this is something that's real important to drill cautiously because if a person has you in a hill hook and they they twist it too hard it, it can injure your ankle this is also very important because in, in the matches and the way the sport is going a lot of more people are doing hill hooks now people are cat people are just throwing a month, but if you know if you know the counters, you're going to be one step ahead, of everybody. Okay, the counters I have, 
I think are by far the simplest and most effective to get out of a hill hook. Okay? The most basic counter to a hill hook, okay, is as Chuck's going for a hill hook on me here and he has it tight, okay, is I want to roll with and I want to flow with the pressure. I don't want to resist because that's where it's going to break. So I'm going to twist my body this way, okay, and roll through, okay. I'm going to roll through and then kick out, okay. So as I roll through, I put this foot on his butt and I kick out. Okay, you still need to be careful if you guys are wearing shoes, whatever, they can catch it more. Um, Make sure you're pointing your toe too when right. you're trying to kick out. Make sure you're pointing your toe when you're kicking out. It's gonna, um, it's, when, when he points the toe, it doesn't allow him to hook the hill as easily. When he's here, they can hook it a lot easier. When it's here, it slips out, okay? Um, let me show you a counter that I've been using a lot that I think is it's my favorite counter. I think it's even a little bit more effective. I think it's even easier. Okay. So as he's going for the hill hook here, okay, I'm going to crawl on my hands and feet this way. As I'm twisting my body, okay, I kick out. Okay, let me show you from a different angle. Again, I can't stress how important it is that, that you really practice this move in the room before you go out there and do it. This twisting and all this twisting is, it can really torque your knee if, you, if you're not experienced. Okay, I'm going to show you some drills after this that are going to help you guys um, making this stuff second nature. Okay, so again, he's falling back for the hill hook. Okay. So I'm crawling on my hands towards his head, creating pressure, and now I start my roll. Okay, as I roll, I should be able to twist out of there, hand fight from this position, come up, or, or from this position, kick out. Okay, those are some good basic ways to get out of a hill hook. Um, now I'm gonna show you guys some drills to make this stuff a lot easier. This drill I'm going to show you is something that I've used and it makes leg locks um, when you're out there in a match. It makes, it makes you react, it makes them second nature. It's something that you guys as instructors or students or whatever can, can practice with your partner. Okay. So the first thing Chuck's going to do is he's going to get me um, in a leg lock. Okay, go ahead and give me a leg lock Chuck. Regular straight leg lock. Yeah. Okay. Now as he gets me in a leg lock, now Chuck's goal right now is just to hold the position on me. Keep me in a good position. Okay, my goal is just to counter and try to fight out of this. But Chuck isn't trying to submit me. He's not gonna put any pressure on me, and that's the key. Okay, he's just gonna try to hold his position every time I try to counter it and break out of his, uh, out, of, out of these obstacles, his legs. He's gonna reset and get back into another leg lock, okay? So it's helping me by countering his leg and it's helping him by resetting and staying in the leg lock. So, we go from here, go, go, okay, we're spinning, rolling, okay, say I clear his obstacles, I start to come up, take okay, he readjust, he whips back over, okay, I might spin, throw him to the outside, use all the techniques and stuff that I've been using, okay. So it's actually like we're almost going about 75% live here, it's almost simulated sparring, and it's making both of us get it very used to being in a leg lock situation. This other drill I'm going to teach you teaches positioning. It teaches you how to dive for a leg. Um, as boring and as tedious as drills might seem, I think they're uh, very effective in uh, making leg locks um, second nature. I think that everybody should incorporate these drills if you want to learn leg locks into your practice schedule every day. Okay. So this drill I do, I start. Okay, with Chuck standing over me, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock to this leg, I'm gonna rock to his other leg, and now I'm gonna dive and pop my hips up as I circle my knee over. Then I rock back down, this side, this side, I dive, I really emphasize popping up on my shoulder, okay, from this position, okay? So we could do this about a minute each guy. Okay, 
that's a real good drill um, to utilize um, diving under, attacking a person from a leg lock position if they're standing over you. Um, it's important to do, and it's something that I think you guys can practice on. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot from my leg lock uh, video series. Um, here's some action that we're going to show from the footage coming up of me actually doing these leg locks in a real competition. Oh. He's fighting out of San Luis Obispo, California. 